Black Screen Presentations Inspiration, Meditation, Relaxation Presents In the year 1843, a man was born who was to have a profound effect upon the lives of millions of people. His name was Russell Herman Conwell. He became a lawyer, then a newspaper editor, and finally a clergyman. It was during his church career that an incident occurred which was to change his life and the lives of countless others. Today, this story, as told by Earl Nightingale, may change your life. This is Black Screen Presentations. And here begins the story. One day a group of young people came to Dr. Conwell at his church and asked him if he'd be willing to instruct them in college courses. They all wanted a college education but lacked the money to pay for it. He told them to let him think about it and come back in a few days. After they left, an idea began to form in Dr. Conwell's mind. He asked himself, why couldn't there be a fine college for poor but deserving young people? And before very long, the idea consumed him. Why not indeed? It was a project worthy of 100% dedication, complete commitment, and almost single-handedly Dr. Conwell raised several million dollars with which he founded Temple University, today one of the country's leading schools. He raised the money by giving more than 6,000 lectures all over the country, and in each one of them he told a story called Acres of Diamonds. It was a true story, which had affected him very deeply, and it had the same effect on his audiences. The money he needed to build the college came pouring in. The story was the account of an African farmer who heard tales about other farmers who had made millions by discovering diamond mines. These tales so excited the farmer that he could hardly wait to sell his farm and go prospecting for diamonds himself. So he sold the farm and spent the rest of his life wandering the African continent searching unsuccessfully for the gleaming gems which brought such high prices on the markets of the world. Finally, the story goes, worn out and in a fit of despondency, he threw himself into a river and drowned. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, or farm in this case, the man who had bought his farm happened to be crossing the small stream on the property when suddenly there was a bright flash of blue and red light from the stream bottom. He bent down, picked up the stone, it was a good-sized stone, and admiring it, later put it on his fireplace mantel as an interesting curiosity. Several weeks later, a visitor picked up the stone, looked closely at it, hefted it in his hand, and nearly fainted. He asked the farmer if he knew what he'd found. When the farmer said no, that he thought it was a piece of crystal, the visitor told him he had found one of the largest diamonds ever discovered. While well, the farmer had trouble believing that, he told the man that his creek was full of such stones, not as large, perhaps, as the one on the mantel, but, well, they were sprinkled generously throughout the creek bottom. Needless to say, the farm the first farmer had sold so that he might find a diamond mine turned out to be the most productive diamond mine on the entire African continent. The first farmer had owned, free and clear, acres of diamonds, but had sold them for practically nothing in order to look for them elsewhere. Well, the moral is clear. If the first farmer had only taken the time to study and prepare himself, to learn what diamonds looked like in their rough state, and since he had already owned a piece of the African continent, to thoroughly explore the property he had before looking elsewhere, all of his wildest dreams would have come true. Now, the thing about this story that so profoundly affected Dr. Conwell and subsequently millions of others 
was the idea that each of us is at this moment standing in the middle of his or her own acres of diamonds. If we'll only have the wisdom and patience to intelligently and effectively explore the work in which we're now engaged, to explore ourselves, we'll usually find the riches we seek, whether they be financial or intangible or both. Before we go running off to what we think are greener pastures, let's make sure that our own is not just as green or perhaps even greener. It's been said that if the other guy's pasture appears to be greener than ours, it's quite possible that it's getting better care. Besides, while we're looking at other pastures, other people are looking at ours. There are few things more pitiful to my mind than the person who wastes his life running from one thing to another, forever looking for the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, and never staying with one thing long enough to find it. No matter what your goal may be, perhaps the road to it can be found in the very thing you're now doing. It wasn't until he was completely paralyzed by polio and forced to reach into the rich resources of his mind that a courageous farmer got the idea of producing exceptionally good meat products on his farm. From that idea, one of the country's most successful meatpacking companies was born. His farm contained acres of diamonds, too. He just never had to dig for them before. Your mind is your richest resource. Let it thoroughly explore the possibilities lurking in what you're presently doing before turning to something new. I say that because there were probably good reasons for your having chosen your present work in the beginning. If there weren't, and if you're unhappy in the field you're in, well, then perhaps it's time for some serious exploration. Dr. Russell Conwell's life is a living example of the importance of a willingness to change once one's own pasture has been thoroughly explored. Dr. Conwell began as a lawyer, then later changed to become a newspaper editor before he finally found his true calling as a clergyman and the founder of a great university. Every kind of work has such opportunity lurking within it. The opportunities are there now, clamoring to be noticed, but they cannot speak or print signs for us to read. Our part of the bargain is to look at our work with new eyes, the eyes of creation. Thank you, Thank you. Earl. Thank you very much. Yes. Because it is said what we want, we already have. What you want, you already have. Just look deeper. Black Screen Presentations Inspiration, Meditation, Relaxation